Guys, I'm here in Scottsdale, Arizona for a very special episode of TFL's Unfiltered Body Review. I have three trucks behind me, but I'm here because Chevrolet flew me out here to test drive the brand new 2019 Silverado with a 2.7 liter turbocharged four-cylinder gas engine. And we're gonna do this. I have a surprise reviewer buddy today and we're gonna drive three trucks. We're gonna first drive the F-150 XLT, then we're gonna drive the Ram Bighorn, and finally we're gonna drive the Silverado 1500 LT double cab with a 2.7 liter turbo. And we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna drive around Scottsdale, give you our, our first impressions. We're gonna show you the fuel economy ratings from the EPA, all the pricing, payload numbers, towing numbers, and at the very end of this video, me and the surprise reviewer are gonna give you our final thoughts and let's do a little rev battle. So let's drive the Ford first. F-150 crew cab. This is a two-wheel drive truck. And uh, this is a 3.3 liter V6. Hey, Kent. Hey, what's happening? Can you join me on this review? Well, of course. I'm not here with all the palm trees. <laughs> Can you pop the hood, dude? Yes, I gotta open the door though. All right. I can't already reach it. Chevrolet invited us here to Scottsdale, Arizona to drive all their trucks and they provided these trucks as well. And under the hood of this XLT Ford is the base engine that Ford has in their lineup. 3.3 liter naturally aspirated V6. This is not an EcoBoost. And the rating is 290 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. And it's made it to a six-speed automatic transmission. And, well, let's see how it drives here around Arizona. So, dude, I, I have actually never driven a 3.3 liter, the new V6, yeah. the naturally aspirated one. And why would you? <laughs> well, well, let's see how it goes. I know, this is the, the, the entry-level engine, which is fine. They all need one of those. It's just not the things that I would really go for. But what do I know? Sure. Hey, what axle ratio does this have? This has a 355. Well, that's pretty good. It's not bad. No, that's almost a trailer axle ratio. That's okay. pretty neat. Look at this um, Monroni here. The price on this XLT is 40,150 bucks. And this engine in two wheel drive is rated at 20 in the city, 25 on the highway, and 22 combined. That's the EPA rating. That's pretty it, decent. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of options. I mean, it's pretty bare bones crew cab, yeah, it's a short crew. bed. Yeah, two wheel drive. Yes, but it does have a, um, Gross vehicle weight of 6,280, so not a lot of, not a really high GVW. No, no. What, what now, is there a nav we're supposed to be following or are you just driving around the country? We're doing, we're driving around the country, dude. <laughs> right. We're all the big cacti drug, girl, they're everywhere up here. Yeah, so, and this is also a six person configuration. There's a little bit of soup there. Okay. There's, there's, some, there's some beans in there. Nice. And this is a six-speed automatic. Yes. Because this is kind of the value play for Ford. Um, this is the base engine, base transmission. Every other F-150 in the lineup will have a 10-speed automatic, but right. this particular engine does not. And it's interesting because, you know, that's what the base engines come with is six-speed, except I think the 3.6 and the Ram comes with an eight-speed, doesn't it? Right. So there's only one in the category that gives you more gears in the base model. Well, it's quiet. It's really nice and quiet. Cloth interior. This uh -huh. is obviously a base truck, six-person configuration. Yes, my with favorite a, seats. With a console. But when we come to a stop here at the red light, let's just kind of give it the beans and give see it how, how it goes, okay? <laughs> I'll do that. All right. Can I do a, can I do a drifting thing around the corner? No, let's not get, let's not get uh, arrested. Okay. <clears throat> You know, the light's not red. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, we could always do to use this. Oh, hear the roar, hear the thunder. Whoa! What, 6,000 RPMs there. It revs pretty freely. Yes, it does. But it sounded like, you know, there was a lot of noise, uh -huh. but not a huge punch of speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it kind of kind of gets you excited there, and then it doesn't go that fast. But actually, it, I shouldn't say that, because for the V6, for non-turbo, this seems like a normal engine. It's about what it would accelerate. That's what you would expect. 
and we're not a mile above sea level. We're no. about 1,300 feet above sea level. Yeah, we're up here. In let a, me let me show you really quick. We're in retirement heaven. There we are. Here we go. We're at about 1,316 feet above sea level, and we're in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it's really nice. Yeah, it's in a slight the high 70s. All right, dude. Well, can I? Can we swap drivers? Can I drive no, back? No, 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 no. I, I oh, want to feel how you, it goes. Do you, you want to drive? Okay. Yes. Let me see. Let me keep looking here. Ah, nice. Okay, now it's my turn. This really is a base interior. Look at all the hard plastic in here. It looks really, really plain. Yeah. Except for the center the console has a little more look to it and that's kind of what you get for 40 grand these now, days this is an xlt or an xl it's an xlt and what chevrolet uh, told us is basically they um wanted to show off kind of volume models dude start stop <laughs> oh don't you hey don't you love that <laughs> well no <laughs> Find I, the I didn't realize the damn thing i didn't out. realize this engine combination with a six-speed head start stop yeah well yeah, that's probably why it gets that 24 miles a gallon on the highway 25 miles a gallon on the highway. That's very impressive. Yes. For what it is, yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna go chase uh, an F type Jaguar. Hold Let's on. Let's do it. Okay, I'm holding on to something here. Oh, hear the thunder. <coughs> You're going so fast, you're blowing all the wind on the side of the road. You see that? There we There's go. That was about 45, which is on this side street, is the law. Now, this has got tilt and telescope. Yeah, it's, was, it's kind of it's manual. Boom. But, but that's so nice. Even on a, on a lower lower well midline model, yes, you get some good toys. We have a basic uh, infotainment system here. This is basically a four-inch screen, and it does have the backup mirror, backup camera on it. Co correct, because now every, everything has to have it. I guess it, right? that's true. That's the law. You're right. And, and uh, but we don't have navigation obviously here, but we have basic functions, and you connect can connect your phone. There's a USB here down below where you can actually you know connect your smart devices and the rest of it huh okay you got seat belts for six how what else could you want what else could you want in a volume truck this well, you can true. take your that's crew true. in this but the mirrors are adequate they're not long but you've got good visibility between the body and the mirror and you've got a spotter mirror on each side i like that i appreciate the spotter mirrors So listen for it to shut off. See? Look at that, it shuts off. Shuts That's off. pretty smooth. Some of these are not real smooth. That one felt pretty good. It's like a stoplight. Not like bad. Set. There's a yeah. little little, a little shutter. Bit of hesitation, yeah. But but not bad. Really, really good. Yeah. Alright, well let's go jump in the ram, okay? Cool. That's what I came here to do. Jump in trucks. Jump in, jump in, jump in. We we love trucks. We do. Hey Ken, check this out. Here's our backup camera. Well, that's cool. It seems small, but it, it is a backup camera. And I don't know if you can... Yeah, it's got a magnification thing. Is that what you pushed? Or I don't know if it's a, a... magnification. I don't know if it's a touch screen. It's not Yeah, and a it does screen. have the black line in the middle. I like that. Ford's first one to do that to actually tracks your ball. Because well, that's what you're trying to hit. The target's the ball, not these big lines five feet apart. Right. So I like that little black line. Well, that's useful. I mean, I, I'm using it right now, including my mirrors. And it's pretty useful to see how far. I don't want to hit that fence. Yeah, there's the red line. You're in the yellow line now. So you just... All right, so there we are. All right, well, let's do a quick walk around outside. Okay. Let's see this truck. All righty then. So, guys, check this out. This truck is running on 17 inch rims, Michelin tires. Fairly basic, but still alloy wheels on this XLT. Obviously, independent suspension in the front. And, of course, leaves in the back. Let's take a look at the payload uh, numbers. Come over here. So this exact configuration has a payload of 1,652 pounds. GVW, as I said, 6,280, but still over 1,500 pounds of payload, usable payload, which is really good. That means you can tow the trailer and still have people and stuff inside the truck. And as I said before, this is a bed liner in the bed which is an optional feature, uh, but I think you gotta bedline your bed if you mean to use your truck. And uh, of course, here in the back, basic tailgate, no assist. 
and no side no step built into the tailgate so pretty basic truck for just over 40,000 so this XLT also has a chrome package so you can see the chrome double bar grill and the chin spoiler is interesting come over here and look at the chin spoiler because usually in a two-wheel drive truck um, the chin spoiler would reach actually quite a lot lower with a kind of a wave going on here but this this looks like this chin spoiler is a little bit higher providing you good clearance in the front even though this is a two-wheel drive truck so you can pick and choose what your uh, front spoiler is and also obviously this is basic these are basic headlights these are not LEDs so this is what you get for this price range 40 grand all right next up is the 2019 Ram 1500 with a v6 e-torque let's go check it out this is a big horn edition, which means it's not the base truck. It has a few options. Hey, Mr. Truck. Hey. Dude, can you pop the hood? Of course I can. We want to see what's under it there. Room, room. Okay, please, please do that. All right, let's 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 see what's under the hood. And this is a 3.6 liter Panastar V6. And all V6 engines for 2019 in the Ram come with an e-torque system. You can kind of see the electric motor down here in the center, this big thing and it's connected to the engine via the serpentine belt. The rating is 305 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. So the rating is the same as the previous generation truck and this engine has made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission, not the six-speed that we saw on the Ford. And this is a two-wheel drive as well and it has a 355 rear end, basically the same rear end as in the Ford as far as ratio is concerned. Well, let's jump in and go for a ride. This seems to be a little more an upscale model what the Ford was. Uh, well, this is uh, their their high volume truck, the Bighorn. Actually, the Bighorn went down in price for the 19, the new model, which surprises me. So that should help. Well, I think that's well. Ram trying to kind of make it more uh, approachable right. to people. Push Look at this start. push button start. <laughs> yeah, and stop start. This, and this, stop start. This 36 comes with the e torque. Now this one is the Bighorn model. Yes. And it, you know it went down in price from the, the 2018, but. I think it's a real nice package. This but look is, at this. The two-wheel drive model does not have, obviously, any controls here right, with, for the four-wheel drive system. Right. There was a lot of stuff there in the four-wheel drive system. This is a 355 rear end, similar yes. to the Ford we just drove. And I imagine our horsepower and torque is not too far apart. Well, no. This has more horsepower this does on the and 36. a tiny bit more torque. But look at this. Uh, the EPA rating um, is... 20 in the city, 25 highway, and 22 combined for this two-wheel drive truck. Once again, really good fuel economy right. for a full and size. Very close to what the Ford was, the 25 on the highway. And the final price is $42,635. Well, dude, let's hit the road. Okay. Push button start, I love it. So you don't have to actually just hunt for the key and no. you don't have to. Uh, Who knows put, we put, even put have a key. key in. Yeah. Well, the thing started. This doesn't have that 12 inch screen. What's up with that? Well, but this, look at this. This is an 8.4. It's a good size, yeah. It's bigger than oh, the Ford. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Howard Stern? Who's uh, listening to no, Howard no, no, Stern? Don't, don't listen to Howard, but I just wanted to show oh. the features here. Um, this has radio apps, but does not have built-in navigation. So, once again, it's kind of a more base truck. Um, you can actually access the camera. Yeah, this has a lot of apps. Oh, that's a big screen compared to the Big Ford. screen. Yes. So, for a volume model, this big horn is actually for now, it's coming out a little bit higher. I like the mirrors too. You now the Ford were taller, these are longer. So I think you get a little more reach with the glass. And you got a good area between the, the door and the mirror for no blind spot. That's good. Oh, this is, I like this setup. And again, we have tilt and telescope. So we're all doing that on these three models, three cool. brands. And this one has tow haul mode, traction control, uh, toggle switches here and the brake controller. So this is part of the towing package. Yeah, I'd be interested available. to see what the towing capacity of this truck is. I will tell it to you at the end of the video. The okay. End of the video. Okay. So the 8.4 inch touchscreen. Whoa! My little V6 roar there. Wow, it does rev high and it yeah, does roar. It's fast. It's a fast revving engine. So the 8.4 inch touchscreen is part of the level one equipment group which cost 1200 bucks so the xlt we drove was a base base xlt sure, yeah i remember that little tiny screen the right that and this small. you have to pay 1200 bucks just to get this bigger screen holy cow and you have to pay a little bit extra for a 355 rear end 
Yeah, and so we're, it's nice the comparable rear ends. We'll find out what's in the Chevy, but at least the Ford and Ram so far, 355. And that's a decent towing machine. If you're really going to tow a lot with this size of an engine, it would be nice to have the 373, or in Ram's case, the 392. Yes, and this also have a trailer brake controller, like I said, but that's also additional. 295 bucks for that. Final price is 42635 as we just said. Now, this is the only one with an 8-speed, right? The, the Chevy doesn't have an 8-speed, it's a 6-speed? No, it does. Oh, it does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ford's on with a 6-speed then? Right, in their base motor. Okay, so these two are 8-speeds, I see. Yep, yep, yep. All right, I can't wait to drive this one, dude. You getting excited? Yeah. But, dude, look at the interior. So we have actually different materials. Uh, kind of basic plastic here, but also kind of a... Not sure what this is, like a faux wood trim? Faux wood trim? And uh, metal, yeah, the metal around it. the chrome it. looks cool. You gotta break it up a little bit. Ford has some of that around the vents too, the chrome. But you gotta break up the, the flatness of everything. Obviously guys, this is not truly apples to apples to apples, right? I mean, it's really difficult, even for a manufacturer like Chevrolet, to get, you know, identically equipped trucks. It is, and these are fairly close, except for the Chevy's four-wheel drive and the Ram and the Ford are two-wheel drive. Yeah, and again, I'm looking at the windshield. This looks a little bigger than what the Ford was. You know, but it's also raked yeah, it is. heavily <clears throat> for aerodynamics. They do that so the PBR cannot get their cowboy hats on and drive. You know, yes. that's why they do that. So it's <laughs> it's hard to wear a cowboy hat in a truck these days. So once again, like you mentioned, there's a center console here, but also a seat. Yeah, and then there's and also a console up. below that, which yeah. is kind of unique to Ram. They like to have a lot of storage units. Let me lift this one up. So look at all that storage. You got cubby holes, you got little places to put all your diamonds and diamonds and your bullets and all, all that your stuff. all your tools. Yes. Once again, start stop right here. Isn't that so wonderful? The engine is not turning right now. Now let's see if you think this is a little smoother than the Ford or the same as the Ford. That would be interesting. Well let, let's check it out. Taking off on this uh, red light. Totally off. Um, but you have to remember, this is a mild hybrid. That's the Ford true. was just a gas motor. Right. So this is really, I mean, the Ford one came, comes off the transmission, has how the stop-start works. This works off that generating motor there on top of the engine. Yeah, which which helps out. Yeah, that uh, may have, that may be a, a more mass for the way this works, which would make it smoother. But but also there is a battery behind the rear seat uh -huh. in this crew cab. Um, basically the it's a 0.4 kilowatt hour so it's a very small capacity battery but you can actually regenerate some of the energy when slowing down right and use that energy later like right now we've been sitting for about a minute or two the engine is still off air condition is still enabled so you have all your features including power steering yeah because that is electric rack and pinion steering on these right and it, it, the electric motor is actually powering all of the accessories right now yeah and that electric motor actually gives you your launch and then your gas engine kicks in yeah so right now so, wait, wait oh there's oh, half that, a shutter that i saw it half a shutter you there. did yeah you didn't feel it no to me i felt a little bit of a, of a hesitation okay well let's see how it accelerates you really have to rev this engine really yeah, high look at that. that was 6800 rpms that was whipping there you really have to rev these base motors really high to get power. Yeah. Well, they're gas engines too. They work in the higher RPMs. That's where torque develops. It's not like a diesel where, you know, right off the bat you got torque. But you know what I wish in a truck, especially with a V6, you know, gas engine? Uh -huh. You have to have a uh, torque, right? You got to get yourself off the line, especially with a heavy weight. Right. And, um, for example, this engine has a 269 pound-feet of torque. The Ford engine had 265. Right. Those are the, those are look sound like small numbers. Yeah. For a big truck. Well, kind of when you got smaller payloads and smaller towing capacities, that's kind of where they line it all up. But you know, that's what made the EcoBoost so famous with Ford is they had the torque band similar to a diesel. It started off right at the bottom end, and that's why they were so cool for towing trailers and accelerating because you had instant torque, better than most gas engines. So we'll see if everybody else does similar things. Like that 2.7, I'm really interested in the torque curve on that. See how that four-cylinder with a turbo can ramp up. We'll guess we'll find out. Yep, we will find out. All right, it's time to back up, and of course, in this truck. You get so much more, you know, zoom in, touch screen. Yeah, that is awesome. This is where you're paying your extra 1200 bucks in the Bighorn for this system. 
it's very high resolution very nice to use very easy to use so this is the bighorn edition of the ram crew cab and check it out let's look at the wheels first uh, these are 18 inches so we saw 17s on the ford for the base xlt these are 18 on the bighorn and you've got the goodyear wrangler tires here which is not a bad tire choice um, well, let's come around here in the bed there's no bed liner in this case still a very basic tailgate once again there's no uh, assist in the tailgate and there's no step this model doesn't have any steps um, similar to what we saw in the xlt and let's look in the front this is a two-wheel drive model once again the chin spoiler once again a lot of space here on this two-wheel drive model so this is nice to see even in a two-wheel drive truck let's check the payload numbers really fast ram has limited use of aluminum body components but this big horn let me find this right here 1871 pounds of payload so about 200 pounds more 300 pounds more than we saw in the Ford and this is a lot of usable payload capability this truck looks very similar to what we saw with the F-150 chrome package on this big horn and it looks pretty upscale for $42,000 or just over $42,000 and we have those far-reaching mirrors on this truck as well so it's actually usable it's got a towing package um, I'm really happy to see this configuration of the truck the time is finally here. Let's get behind the wheel of the 2019 Silverado with a turbocharged four-cylinder gas motor. Let's check it out and let's see under the hood. Hey, Mr. Truck, can you pop the hood for I'm, us? I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading. This Moroni's gigantic. You see, it's twice please, as big. Please pop it. Okay. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay, so Chevrolet provided all these trucks and this is their truck that we're focused on during this event. There it is. This is the first time we see this engine actually up close. Um, this is the 2.7 liter four-cylinder turbocharged motor and it's actually it starts about right here and it goes underneath the uh, cabin there so it's positioned centrally inside the truck uh, the power rating on this motor is fairly spectacular for such a small displacement 310 horsepower and 348 pound-feet of torque and it's made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission this particular truck we have here is a four-wheel drive and it has a 342 rear end and let's see how this drives because this is a lot of torque and I have been waiting to drive this on the street finally we get a chance let's go check it out there's also a double cab which is an extended cab in Chevrolet speak right with the four doors going the right direction yes so do we have a push button we do Hey, I like, like this. This has tilt and telescope with one lever. You know, for a long time Chevy had two levers. Oh, now yes, we're down yes, to one yes, lever. Yes. Look at that dash. That's pretty cool. So check this out, guys. The final price MSRP on this truck is forty-four thousand nine hundred. So it's still about two, two and a half thousand more than the Ram. Right, but it's four-wheel drive. And, and it's four-wheel drive. You have to yeah. remember, four-wheel drive is very expensive. And this is actually an RST All Star Edition. Right. So this has quite a few options on it for this price of just under $45,000. Yeah, now this cab is cheaper than the crew cabs we drove in the Ram and the Ford. Right, so, so this is not some quite, money there. Yeah. it's not quite apples to apples. Right, and 342, very close on axle ratios. But you know, that's, I don't understand, of course, if they can only get the trucks they can get, but why would you have a media launch and have this be in the lowest fuel mileage when that's this, the purpose of this is the others are 25 on the highway right 19 city 22 highway right. 20 combined so in this particular truck if i were doing this i surely would not get a, a chevy that got less fuel mileage than a ram in the Ford. but show them the trip meter i don't know if the camera guy can actually zoom in sure. so whoever driven last got 21.3 which button you mean to push but no that's it okay. 21.4 is can the you MPG. See that in? yeah it's that's driving around here, so it may be very close on fuel mileage, but this one, you know, it could be real close on weight because of the smaller cab, even adding the four-wheel drive. We can tell it's got a turbo because it had a little lag at the beginning, you know, it's and then it spooled lag. up. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little laggy. It had to shift several times in the eight-speed. 
yeah. to actually get going and actually put the power down. Yeah, that's it's, it's an interesting idea that they have on this using such a small engine. Well, it's the same size. Ford has a 2.7, but it's a V6 twin turbo. So this, I would think, would be their version of how to get the best fuel mileage out of these half-ton trucks. I guess we'll find out what the, what people think about this when it goes on sale. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I initially said RST. Um, yeah, I was LT. incorrect. It's an yeah. LT double cab, right. which is the LT and RST are kind of in the mid-grade for Chevrolet. Right, right. And that's what Chevy guys told us for this event. They wanted to show kind of most volume trucks and RST is one of them and LT I would put LT actually closer to the higher end yeah, I would too that used to be what that meant it used to meant leather LS was a base model yeah LT meant leather so they changed all that but you know oh, I don't goes once, yeah once I, I don't mind the sound of this even though it's only a four cylinder straight four uh -huh. I don't mind the sound this one really doesn't sound you know, you think it would sound more like a you know a real a small wheezy engine. sports yeah, car right so this really doesn't doesn't do too bad. I don't know. It sounds that much different than a V6. A V6. I don't know which one revs the fat the highest. Which one do you think has the higher RPM band? Because this one, Redline, is you know 55. That's pretty normal. Well, the other, the natural aspirated motors, actually were revving past 6,000. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. But you're making all of your torque, you know, around 3,500 RPM here. So you're making your torque down low. Well, that's good. That's that's what we need if we're going to pull trailers and do all these accelerations you need torque at the beginning like a diesel and once again so this is, has a, a bigger infotainment system and for 2019 Chevrolet is introducing their next generation of Chevrolet infotainment different icons different layout slightly different layout um, we also have trailering apps so several trailering um, um, capabilities here yeah they really shine on trailering now they you know, have that sticker in the door that tells you exactly which trailer this truck hooks up to, yeah. which makes it so much easier to really compare it. And a lot of different features here. Uh, we have the tailgate, the power down oh. tailgate. Here. Yes, that's awesome. I love that. Yes. Does it power up too? Uh, not it shows it going both directions. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Not on this one. We'll we'll test they do that make out. One like that, though, right? Yeah, they do in the yeah. high country in their that's highest what I was level. Thinking they had one that in the highest level truck they do. This truck also has the safety package for 890 bucks. Includes lane change alert, front and rear park assist. Um, as you can see here, 342 rear end and a 7,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating, which is the highest of the trucks that we just uh, reviewed. Yeah. But once is, again, this is a four wheel drive. Yeah, and you got to so you have a higher weight to, to, make, to compensate for that. Okay. Now looking at the windshield, this one, I think the Ram of the three. This one's pretty close to the Ram size. I like this windshield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a not a not a big windshield. No. Well, uh, can I get behind the wheel? No. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll arm wrestle for who gets to drive it next. Oh, I like this dash. This is a cool layout. And again, this is a six passenger. I love it. This also folds up. I don't know if you can see that, but it this folds up. And I don't know if the bottom one folds up. Let me see. It does. Look at that. You got a bottom console. Awesome. But I like when I buy a truck with this much money, I want six seats. I don't get all the grandkids in here. Yeah, this is good. I like this. I like these seats. Well, get out of the. Well, get out of the. What if I don't seat. want to? You gonna make me? Come on, I'm gonna have to pull you out. You know what I really like? What do you really like? Um, these cubbies here. A lot of little storage. There's a lot places. of little cubbies, and yeah. I mean, there's extra storage in here. You put your camera in there. You betcha. So, I really like the usability of this. You know, we always get the, you know, high-end trucks in Colorado when we test them. Yeah. But it's really refreshing to actually have, not have the console in here. Yeah, and that's all three of these trucks, they happen to get that right. They're all six passengers, which I appreciate. So here's our backup camera. This is the first look at it. Doesn't have the middle line. I know, um, I think, oh, there, is there's a the middle, middle line, line okay. feature. It's so you but they're not together. Yeah. You either, either get the double lines or the center line. So once again, start stop. Yeah. Uh, the engine just shut off. The air conditioner is still running. Now does okay. So this one, the or Ford doesn't probably have an extra battery like the hybrid mild hybrid of Ram. Correct. So there's a difference there. Correct. But still, all the features are still working. We have, of course, phone, 
we have navigation which is connected through OnStar. So you can yeah. actually get some directions by calling OnStar and Wi-Fi is available, which is a great feature as well. Of course, Apple CarPlay, you can connect your phones. You have your USB ports down here. What's this? this is the 110? Oh, that's a great lighter. No, just a, just 12 a 12 volt. volt. Which is useful, but we have some, you know, something missing because this yeah. is not a high-end truck. They had 110 volt on Right. This. Some of them are missing, but this button actually controls all windows at once. Yeah, that's kind of a neat thing if you're the out engine, here in Arizona. The engine just cool. restarted. Wow, it Look. shuddered a little bit, yeah. See that. Yeah, but remembering the RAM, it was sitting here for a couple minutes well, it's got without that battery, restarting. So it's right. the only one with a battery that right. will allow you to do that. Yes. So that's the difference. So there was a small shutter when, uh, when it restarted. Yeah. Well, let me uh, kind of give it some beans, okay? Yeah, give it the beans around this corner. See if this thing will drift. That felt good. Actually, this may be the best acceleration of the three. I think so. Of course, it's the only turbo of the three. It's the only turbo, but you know, the sound is unique. It, it doesn't is, it sound is. quieter like a V6 would. Right. It has a little bit higher pitch. I would not say it's objectionable, it's just a little different. Yes. But once the RPM builds, this truck really takes off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. There's so much science in this engine. It just takes, you got to have an engineer explain it because I can't explain this. Yeah, engine. well, let me try. You know, okay. I've seen this engine up close in a previous event and uh, it's pretty fancy motor. Yeah. Um, so 2.7 liter, it's kind of a big four cylinder yeah. for a four yeah, cylinder that's engine. True. That's true. Uh, for displacement, but it has variable valve timing. So it has, you know, the uh, valve train that can select either efficiency uh, lobes, you know, how far right. the valves go up and down, right. or high performance. Does that so mean the camshaft moves? Does yeah, it, it, mo it slides, slides and back and forth wow. for different lobes. Yeah. Um, then it has cylinder deactivation, so yeah. it can actually shut down cylinders still from four to two. Yeah, and that's the new one, the new cylinder deactivation. It's not, you know, the well, other it's one. a little bit unique because it's a four banger. Yeah. So it's a little, it's I guess you can't system. shut up more than half of a four <laughs> cylinder. You'd have to You can't run on half a cylinder. That's true. That's no, well, true. well, or one. Anyway, so that does have that. And then the turbocharger is a unique design. They call it the double volute, which means it's actually the pulses on the turbine actually can hit in two places. So it's got two kind of two intake runners coming yeah. into it. Yeah. So that means you can kind of spin up that wheel faster. Well, that's good. Which, you know, we still felt a little bit of lag. Yeah, it was a little bit of lag. Let's we'll see what it does with the trailer on, because that may affect it. Yeah. Because it would pull it down and it may not have lag. But yeah, it's interesting. So we really got to get this truck in the eye gauntlet and see exactly how it that's does. That's true. I do like these mirrors. They're not as, they're closer to the body than the Ram or the Ford, which surprises me, because they did that pedestal on the door on purpose to give you a better clearance in there mm -hmm. but but it's not it's actually closer than ram and ford so i'm kind of confused on the idea of that with that mirror i like these mirrors these are uh they're long so you got a little more uh reach with them which i like i like to be able to see what my tires do when i go around a corner this doesn't have spotter i think both the, uh, of course this is a four wheel drive different configurations with the mirrors but the ram and the ford both had spotter mirrors on both sides mm -hmm. so i'm not sure why we don't have any spotters well on this one has blind spot monitoring well, that's true. So if that's you see why the, it's little, the little yeah. symbol, it will actually blink those little orange lights. Yeah, that's if when you get somebody, too close to somebody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If somebody's on your side. So this has a little bit more safety equipment than this. Uh huh. Uh, but still, it's under 45,000, which is I th it's pretty impressive. Four wheel drive. It's not a crew cab, it's right. a double cab. Yeah. But a lot of features packed in for 45 grand. Well, that's true. And I don't think, I think that's. Compare, very comparable to the other two when you average it all out with cab and four-wheel drive I think uh, you know if you were apples to apples you'd be very close on price on all three of them but you know what Ram had a higher resolution picture I believe yeah this has got a lot of fish in which is they're trying to be as wide as they can to see what's all behind you but yeah and the Ram I think got a bigger screen didn't it it seemed like a slightly bigger screen, bigger screen. Than this. Ford had the smallest screen but in this case the resolution is not that high and, um, you know, I really wish it was as good as in the Ram. But look at this. I also have uh, parking sensors here. Oh, cool. So cool. they're going off in the center. So you have optionally uh, that helping you out as well. I like the gauge cluster. They've got everything all in one spot. I've always liked that way of doing it. You know, a lot of the trucks, especially with their high end, will have different digital ones and you can reconfigure them. But 
that's the age cluster I want to look at when I jump in a truck. That tells me everything. This. Around town, real MPG average twenty one. That's for a four wheel drive truck. Uh huh. I think in reality that's a good number, because you know when we drive in the in Colorado you, I, from Ram Tradesman four by four, I saw about twenty. Yeah. In real world numbers. Right. So 21 is actually a really good one. And we've both been wrapping them up to see what the turbo yeah, felt like. We, so we did not. We weren't babying easy. this engine at all. No. So no, I, I think you're right. Because we were shooting RPMs wide open throttle. And to do that with all the monkey and we've been doing, I think that is good. I think that's a good number. All right, guys, let's take a look at the wheel and tire combination on this LT Silverado. Um, this right here is a 17 inch rim, aluminum alloy, very similar, well, similar size than the Ford. And we have the grabber tires here, general grabbers, which is fairly good traction. You can see a lot of sipes here for snowy performance. And this is a four wheel drive truck. Once again, we have chrome. And in the bed, this is a black jet black truck, but no bed liner. So take a look at this. By the way, push button tailgate assisted. And you have you know this cover here with the cup hold cut outs. But there's no bed liner here. But this is what Chevrolet does unique. They moved the interior walls further. They basically added about three and a half inches of bed, usable bed space inside the bed on each side. So about seven inches extra. And you have three tie down hooks on each corner, making 12 total tie downs here. So let's look at the payload number really fast inside the door. Remember, this is a four-wheel drive. 2011, right here in this corner. Guys, this is the highest payload of these three trucks. It's not a crew cab, you could see this is a double cab here. But still, over 2,000 pounds for a four-wheel drive truck in a half-ton segment, that's really good payload. I'm really happy to see that you can carry the trailer and also your entire crew and family inside the truck. Chevy Silverado's design has been controversial. You could see this grill, but when you compare it to the Ram next to it, the hood on the Chevy sits a little higher. So if you look that bold statement of a truck where it looks tall and mean, Silverado is it. Of course, if you want to do a lot of off-roading, you don't want to have to have a huge hood. Maybe a lower hood like on the Ram or the Ford may be better. So to each their own, but Chevrolet also has this neat interesting feature uh, the air curtain here there's actually air can come in here and it's for aerodynamics and this whole piece is just a corner piece here which means if you do crunch it in an accident you can just replace this section instead of replacing the entire fender which could be pretty useful I'm gonna rev the Ford with this 3.3 .3 v6 Rev the Ram 3.6 with that new e torque. This is the new Chevy 2.7, rev it up about 4,000 RPM, too. It's a different sound, but I wouldn't say it's a bad sound. There is one more thing though. You gotta hear the uh, waste gate on this turbo. Hey Kent, rev it again. Let it go all the way. You can hear the turbo just a touch from the front of this engine. This 2018, which is the same as the 19 F-150, yes. with that 3.3 .3 V6. Yes. What will it tow? And it's got a 355 rear end axle. What does it tow with that six speed? Well, that's very important. The 355 rear end on this truck limits it to about 5,000 pounds of towing. 
Really? That's my, 5, left, my left leg weighs 5,000 pounds. But if you wanted more from this base motor in the Ford, you can go to a 373 rear right, axle. Max tow package thing? Right, for 7,400 pounds. Okay, well, that's about there. Okay. Now, this is a 2019 Ram Bighorn, and this has that 3.6 V6 with e torque. Yes. And a 355 rear and axle ratio. How much will this tow with an 8 speed? Well, the way this is one is configured, 7,590 pounds. 7,590. Okay, so we almost up. 76. Okay, oh, that's cool. Okay. And now for the new kit on the block, this 2.7 in the Chevy Silverado 19, 2.7 with a turbo, and it yes. has a 342 rear end and an 8 speed. Yes. How much will this one tow? Well, it's 7,200 pounds. Okay, so it's kind of in the mid-range there. Right, it's not quite as much as the uh, Panther Star and in the Ram, but it is uh, more than that 5,000 pounds in that base Ford. All right, so we had just, what, 10 or 20 minutes with each truck. Yeah. This is the first impression. Uh, what's your favorite engine out of these three? Well, it was cool to be in a 2.7 finally from the Chevy. And actually, that turbo, it had a little bit of leg at the beginning. I think with the trader on it, it would level out. I'd like to try that. But I think that the Chevy was the most impressive off the line. I think it spooled up enough to give you that speed. I think it outran the other two. But, you know, it's an 8-speed. It's a new kid. We're going to find out for how few mileage levels out with it. But if I was to pick one of the three for what I thought performed the best right now, I would go with the 2.7 Chevy. Oh, this was a tough choice for me because the 3.3 and the Ford, I think it revved quite nicely. It was free revving. Same with the Panastar V6 and the Ram. And I just love that e-torque system. I don't know if it's just me, but I just love how smooth that system is. Uh -huh. um, the 2.7, uh, it did have some lag, yeah. uh, but the impressive part was the real world economy. You know, we saw 21 MPG from this 4x4 truck. And with this LT under 45 grand, uh -huh. I think it packs a lot of value for what you're getting in this particular Silverado. So I was quite impressed. Well, tell me this. They all had stop start. Which one had the least amount of shutter? Which was the smoothest stop start of any of the three systems here? Sheesh. This was a close call, but I think <laughs> Ram was the best. Was the best. Just the smoothest. Uh, we saw a little bit of, I saw a little bit of shutter in both the Ford and the Chevrolet. Right. And then the Ram is the only one that's a standalone system. It's not in the transmission. Okay. Yes. Cool. Guys, go back to tfltruck.com for my news views and real world first time unfiltered buddy reviews <laughs> yeah it's our buddy reviews and where <laughs> else can they go to mr truck.com